Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video, we're going to be solving a nice equation with complex numbers that involves absolute value. So Z is a complex number. What is a complex number? If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a bunch of videos for the basics of complex numbers. If you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry problems, go ahead and check out my other channel, Cyber Math, Cyber with an S. So let's get started. We have the absolute value of z squared plus 2z, or not 2z, sorry, I had to say that, equals 33 minus 6i. So we're going to be solving for z, and if z is a complex number, it can be written as a plus bi or x minus or x plus yi. But why do we want to go with a plus bi? Because it's the name of this channel, right? There's a good reason behind that. But you can also use x plus y, especially for locus problems. You may want to use this because eventually uh, you're going to graph it. So it's better to have x and y. Cool. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve an equation like this. First of all, notice that if instead of the absolute value, we had z, then this could be easily turned to a quadratic equation, right? I mean, it is quadratic, but we could kind of add one to both sides, make it a perfect square, so on and so forth. But absolute value of z is different from z. Can they be the same? Sure, absolutely. But, absolutely. But when z is not real, that's not the case. So, that's not the eraser, I guess. Anyways, so we can't do that. So absolute value of z is actually defined as the square root of a squared plus b squared. So what, what's the quick story behind it? If you plot a complex number in the argon plane, you have an imaginary axis and a real axis, uh, just like normal. But in, instead of uh, one on the imaginary or the, or the y axis, you just call that i. So every unit on the imaginary is i units. Okay, and going from reals to imaginary numbers is a rotation of 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians which is in the counterclockwise direction, of course, right? So absolute value of z is basically represents, it represents the distance of the number z from zero. By using the Pythagorean theorem to make uh, things a little easier to understand, let's keep this in the first quadrant, right? So we also get an angle here, which is called the argument of z, but we're not gonna have to worry about it right now I mean, you can, obviously, uh, but we're probably not going to use that method. We could. We could give it a try and see if that works. So let's go ahead and start with a plus bi. Since z is equal to that, we can replace z with that and absolute value of z with this. So like this and like that. Let's see what that gives us. By the way, if you square the absolute value of z, you get a squared plus z squared, which is, by the way which is, by the way, equal to z times z bar. And z bar is the complex conjugate of z. It's defined as a minus bi. So if you multiply a plus bi and a minus bi from difference of two squares, you get a sum of two squares. Oops, I forgot to tell you, i squared is negative one. So i is basically defined as the square root of negative one. There are two square roots, but one of them is called the principal square root, okay? So after having said that, let's go ahead and dive into this. So I'm gonna replace absolute value of z squared with a squared plus b squared, and then I have two times z, which is a plus bi, it's equal to 33 minus six i. Let's go ahead and put the real parts together because we can do so, a squared plus b squared plus two a plus two b, or not two b, sorry, I have to say that too equals 33 minus 6i. Now we're going to do a one-to-one -one correspondence, which means real parts equal real parts. And the real part here is 33. Nice. So we're going to set this equal to 33, which is a quadratic equation with two unknowns. Uh-oh, that's not very good. But the second one is actually really cool because this expression right here, 2b, is supposed to equal negative six, which means b is equal to negative three. And that helps out a lot. 
because you can just go ahead and substitute that, making that equation a lot simpler. So we get a squared plus b squared, which is 9, plus 2a equals 33. And then you can go ahead and subtract 9 from both sides if you want. You know what? I'm going to do something amazing, uh, something that is known as completing the square. So let's go ahead and erase this. I'm going to go ahead and write this as follows. In other words, I'm going to be adding 1 to both sides. Okay, so that's going to look like this. As you can see, this is a plus 1 squared, and this is 25, and I can just solve for a. Easy, right? a plus 1 is 5. That gives us a equals 4. If a plus 1 is negative 5, because you got to remember, there are two numbers whose square equals 25. Those are 5 and negative 5. In the complex world, those are considered the square roots of 25. But in the real world, 25 has only one square root. Okay? So A can be 4 or A can be negative 6. But B is always negative 3. What does that mean? Let's go ahead and make pairs of numbers and write down what this means. Since our complex number Z was defined as a plus bi, and these are the ab values. If a is 4, b is negative 3. If a is negative 6, b is negative 3. So b doesn't really care about a, right? So our number solutions are 4 minus 3i or negative 6 minus 3i. Both of these solutions, they have the imaginary part in common. They have the same imaginary part, but the real parts are different. But the, by the way, there's a good way to make sure we did it right. Substitute or check our work. I know people don't like it. They, they, they hate it. Like, I, I did it correctly, whatever. Sometimes you find mistakes. You know, if you have time, do it. Absolute value of Z here is 5, right? And that would give us 5 squared, which is going to be 25. And then 2Z is going to be 8 minus 6i. And that will actually give us this number. What about this one? The absolute value looks like a radical, doesn't it? Well, the absolute value is going to be 36 plus 9, which is square root of 45. But we're going to square it and add 2 times the number. This will be 45 minus 12 minus 6i. Again, 33 minus 6i. Yay! Our solutions work. Are there any other solutions? Nope. If we did, they would come up. So let's go ahead and quickly look at a second approach and alternative for this problem. We'll briefly take a look at it. We don't need to complete it because we're running out of time. <laughs> okay, time. The clock is ticking. So now, if you replace z with r e to the i theta, basically absolute value of z is the same as r, which is also called the modulus. Can we do this? Well, let's give it a try. If you replace the absolute value of z with r, you're going to get r squared and then z is just going to be r e to the i theta. And this is supposed to equal 33 minus 6i. Here's the challenging part. This part is going to be like this, cosine theta plus i sine theta. Actually, it's not super challenging, I think. And then we're going to go ahead and distribute 2r cosine theta plus i times 2r sine theta. So here's what we need to have. The real part is 33, so this needs to be 33. And this needs to be negative 6, which means r sine theta is negative 3. So from here, we can write r as negative 3 over sine theta. Plug it into this equation. r squared is going to be 9 over sine squared theta plus 2r times cosine, which is... Uh-oh, what is cosine? I don't know. But I guess we could find it. Hmm. Let me see. You know what? I'll probably no. I'm not. I'm. I don't need cosine. I'm gonna go ahead and replace r with. That's what I was supposed to do, anyways, right? R with this negative three over sine theta, and then multiply by cosine theta. Here we go. And that's equal to thirty three. Everything is trigonometric. Everything is written in terms of theta, and this becomes nine over sine sine squared, which can be written as nine cosecant squared. Oops, cosecant is I think. CSC, right? CSC squared. And this should be negative 6 
cotangent theta, and there's a relationship between cosecant squared and cotangent. I think cosecant squared can be written as one plus cotangent squared, and this becomes a trigonometric, I mean, a quadratic equation cotangent. You find it, you go back and find sine and cosine, but that's a really long way to do it. But you can still do it. It's just an alternative method that I showed you, okay? Now, can we find solutions in Wolfram from alpha? Ta -da -da -da. Yes, we can. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.